M.K. Abiola was a very wealthy man. He was also influential and powerful. Abiola controlled virtually everything in his lifetime, from business, communications, and religion to politics, international affairs, and even sports. Abiola had everything he wanted, money, fame, connection, and power. He was even elected as president in one of Africa's freest and fairest elections. However, the election process was nullified and Abiola was robbed of his mandate under enigmatic circumstances. Fashiru Moshud Kashimaru Olawali MKO Abiola was born on August 24, 1937, to Alaji Salau Adelikon Akone Abiola and Mrs. Zeli Atwuraola Anyeke Abiola in Abiokuta, the capital city of Ogun State, Nigeria. He was not formally named until he was 15 years old. Prior to that, he was only known as Kashimaru, meaning let's wait and see in the Yoruba language. There were signs in his early life that Abiola had come to this world to struggle and overcome. As his aging father fell on hard times, he was forced to start taking financial responsibility for himself and his family as early as nine years old, when he started his first business, selling firewood. After completing school, Abiola left home to work as a clerk at Barclays Bank in Ibadan, the then capital city of the western region of Nigeria. The very same day he got the job, his mother died. Abiola therefore was determined to make a success of himself. MKU Abiola's journey to entrepreneurial success was invigorated by his Scottish university education. On his return to Nigeria in 1966, he was ready to put to practice all that he had learned. It was 18 years after achieving his qualification as a chartered accountant from the University of Glasgow in Scotland that Abiola established his reputation as an entrepreneurial force to be reckoned with internationally. In his role as the Senior Vice President for Africa and the Middle East at the International Telephone and Telegraph ITT Corporation, Abiola had gained immense international business exposure and was named International Businessman of the Year in 1988. Abiola's international business achievements were partially responsible for the fact that he was made the head of the Nigerian Stock Exchange in 1990. As a philanthropist, he used his wealth to address some of the challenges he encountered in his earlier days. He fought his way out of poverty and sought to assist others to do the same. In 1987, he received the highest honor available to a commoner in the Yoruba tribe. He was made the Are Honor Kankafu of Yoruba land and effectively became the field marshal of the Yoruba people. In 1993, Abiola won the presidential primaries of the Social Democratic Party and officially declared his candidacy for the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. A week before the presidential elections, he had to go on national television and participate in a debate with his opponent Bashar Tofa. He was grilled by members of the opposition party on a number of issues. One of these was his own interest in the oil industry and the management of Nigeria's petroleum sector. Even though the military sought to annul the election, the open ballot system used in the June 12, 1993 election meant that the results of the election were known very quickly after voting. MK Abiola won in 19 out of Nigeria's 30 states and sought to focus on what the June 12 election meant for Nigeria. Abiola managed to win in states that many would have thought inconceivable for a southerner. His victory in Kano State in the northern part of Nigeria was a measure of the extent to which he had become a bridge. The military head of state, General Ibrahim Babangida, was eventually forced to relinquish power, but rather than handing over to Abiola, Babangida handed over to an interim national government headed by Chief Ernest Shoneko, a British-trained lawyer and businessman from Abiola's home region of Abiokuta. This was met with fierce opposition by well-meaning Nigerians. Interim is interim. Interim, from the way I look at it, is not a democratically elected civilian government. Interim means somebody is handpicked. Come and stay here. That, in other words, means installation. Even Abiola vilified Obangida for his role in the annulled June 12 elections, while he appealed to his supporters to be calm. It will, it will continue off and on until the military release, release the result of the June 12 election. 
and put the democratically elected president, who is myself, in charge of affairs. I won't go to war. I won't encourage my supporters to go to war. I will fight for peace. And we will get peace. But you see, we do not want the peace of a graveyard. A peace whereby somebody continues to ride on the rest of us with a gun. We will get peace, but we'll get peace with decency and integrity and honesty and probity and democracy. In 1994, at the inauguration of Nelson Mandela in South Africa, Abiola sat at the seat reserved for Nigeria's head of state. On his return to Nigeria, he formally declared himself as President of the Federal Republic. The military head of state General Sonny Abacha, who had surreptitiously taken power from Shuneko, and his advisors pondered over what course of action to take. It was then decided that Abiola should be arrested for treason. Around 200 vehicles came to his home in Ikeja, the capital city of Lagos State, to arrest him on June 23, 1994. However, before his arrest, Abiola granted an interview with the BBC, his last ever interview. Uh, what is happening at your house? Are you being arrested? I'm being arrested. I'm just going out now with the police. Uh, Why are they arresting you? They are arresting me uh, on an allegation of felony, namely treason or something like that. They are not doing anything, they are just taking me away. Please let me go. You know, I'm delaying them. And so where are you now? Are you in your car? I'm in my car now. Is it police who are with you in your car or are they escorted? Are they yes, the, the commissioner of police is in the car with me. And my senior wife is in the car with me. Why are they letting you talk on the phone to the BBC while they're in the middle of arresting you? <laughs> they have come to arrest me, not to arrest my mouth. You sound very cheerful about it, Chief Abiola. Of course. You know, <laughs> it's all part of democracy here. Yeah. And you're happy to go to the police and await whatever charges uh, they're going to file against you? I'm not in any way, in any way, disturbed by it. Any sacrifice is in order. If it will bring democracy, peace and prosperity to Nigeria. Is it possible to talk to the commissioner of police who's with you in the car? I don't know if the commissioner of police is, of, is, is authorized to talk. He cannot talk to the press. What is your advice now to your supporters, many of whom we heard a moment ago? Well, I told them before I left home to just stay calm. It is very, very important that they stay calm. So you're appealing for calm. You don't want them to take any direct action in your support? No, 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 no. You still say you're the president of Nigeria, but it's not much good if you're going to be in jail. Well, Mandela was in jail for 27 years. Kayaka was in jail. I suppose... That is one of the qualifications you need in this part of the world. Don't worry yourself, my friend. With Abiola's arrest, one of the darkest eras in Nigeria's history began. There were mass arrests and even assassinations, especially of those known to support Chief MKU Abiola's presidential mandate. The most alarming incident of this kind was the murder of Abiola's wife, Kudirat Abiola, on June 4, 1996. Abiola remained detained in solitary confinement where he lacked adequate medical care, all in an attempt to pressure him into renouncing his mandate. General Sonny Abasha had also offered to return his election expenses, but Abiola rejected it and preferred to stay detained. In July 1998, during a meeting with a U.S. delegation headed by Ambassador Thomas Pickering, Chief M.K. Abiola collapsed and died. The sudden death of Chief M.K. Abiola on July 7, 1998 was breaking news around the world. He was 60 years old. 
Abiola's death succeeded in discrediting military rule in Nigeria and his outstanding contribution to his country, the African continent and the world at large, was acknowledged six years after his death when the New Africa magazine listed him among the 100 greatest Africans of all time. On June 6, 2018, President Muhammadu Buhari posthumously conferred on Chief Abiola the highest title of Grand Commander of the Federal Republic GCFR, and made June 12 a federal holiday instead of May 29. Buhari also named the National Stadium in Abuja after Abiola during the maiden June 12 Democracy Day celebration at the Ugo Square on June 12, 2019. If you enjoyed this video, don't hesitate to comment, like, and share with your friends. You can also subscribe to our channel to receive the latest videos as they drop.